we've got Murphy back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? Oh, you know, um, just a, another day in Ohio, I suppose. It rained all weekend. Yes, Sun Card, here's your weather talk. That's that's two out of the last three episodes, I think, with some opening weather talk. Just for Sun Card, just for our, our homie Sun Card, who likes nothing more. But I really, yes, really could just use, really could just use some straight up sun. I doesn't even need to be that warm. I will take low sixties, and sun. That's all I need. That's all I need. Well, you're you're in Ohio. What what do you expect? Ohio in winter? What it's not winter expect? anymore. It's spring now, which is why it's rain. But but Jared, ah. it's spring, therefore it's raining. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Speaking of spring, Jared. Yes. Good transition. Spring, spring football. Spring football. We're finally finally going to be talking some spring football here. Lots going on here. Lots of updates. Lots of Jared's favorite favorite thing about spring spring and uh, fall camp here. Position battles. Lots of position battles to talk about as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, Kyle, let's... Uh... Let's not screw around. You mean, I, Kyle, who, who votes not to screw around? I, I vote no screw around. I say let's get into but, it. We do that all the time, Jared. So it's nothing. It's nothing new. I want to. Uh, Austin says he wants to screw around. Um, guys, should we just do or, or let's pivot into a shenanigans episode? No, I'm kidding. Let's talk. Is there a heavy echo from Kyle? Um, Kyle, uh, I, actually, I noticed that, too. Um, you're, is there a chance you're not using your, your good mic? Let me check. Like there's a decent chance and I'm just talking to fill time at this point. Um, mm -hmm. there's a decent, is that better? Is that better? It's, it's better, but yeah, we might just have to go. But yeah, it it almost sounds like you're. It's like you're talking in a in an empty room is kind of what it sounds like. We're I'm gonna keep talking. Nope, no, nope, not not what I thought. So we're we're just gonna keep rolling, Jared. All right, we're gonna keep rolling. Sorry for Kyle's audio quality. We'll figure it out. Sounds like the mic on his earbuds. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was saying. Like. It kind of sounds like it's not as good, Mike, is what I was theorizing. But uh, as Kyle takes a moment longer to check that out, um, what we're going to do today, we're going to take a look at who has left and who Ohio State is, is maybe looking to replace them with. So we're going to take a look at, you know, positions Left open by Paris Johnson, Tanner McAllister, Zach Harrison, Cam Brown, CJ Stroud, Ronnie Hickman, Teron Vincent, Luke Whipler, Dwan Jones. Um, and then we're going to say, all right, who they're out, who's in? And we have one or two here. We have one or two names here. And we're going to basically one or two names that we're going to be like, we're pretty sure it's this guy. Everyone else, we're going to give you some names. Um, and then as time allows, we have uh, some other interesting um, storylines to follow as we advance through spring camp. Kyle, that, that's as much of an intro as I could do. Um, if, if you're not seeing anything, we'll just have to roll with a slightly below average audio quality for today. Yep. Sorry about that. It's, uh, you know, it, it happens. Um I heard a click. Did you hear a click? No. Okay. It's the same. All right. Kyle Paris Johnson out. Um, one of the best tackles Ohio States had come through the program in a while since Taylor Decker, potentially. Um, who's Ohio State looking potentially to, to fill that void. Well, that's, it's one of the things we, we talked about once um once the season end is is how is this offensive line going to look this year? 
this upcoming year. And the biggest one is who's going to replace Paris Johnson here. And probably the biggest, probably the name that you hear the most is probably Josh Fryer yep. right now. I, I would say he's probably the leading candidate for that. Yeah. And from what I'm hearing, Josh Fryer is looking good, which was, which, which was what had to happen. I think Ohio state wanted Josh Fryer to win this job. You know, there was talk. Could Ohio State potentially move a guard out to tackle, move a tackle from right to left, left to right? But I think the ideal scenario for Ohio State is that Josh Fryer showed up to camp ready to be the left tackle. And early reports, and we're, we're still in early reports territory here, early reports is that he's he's looking good at left tackle right now, which will help them, you know, keep their guards at guard and try to put together, you know, a little bit more of a stable look up front with, you know, tackles playing tackles and guards playing guards and centers playing centers. Yeah, that, that was, that was always one of the biggest, biggest disappointments uh, a few years ago when we talked about getting your five best offensive linemen on the field and things will work out and it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> It worked out when you were passing the ball, just not so much when it was like third and one. But that's that's a different podcast for two years ago. Yeah. So let's stay on the offensive yeah. lineman, Kyle. Ohio State didn't just lose one tackle. They lost both tackles, which sucks. Who are we looking yes. to potentially replace Dwan Jones with? A couple of names here. Um, Tegra. I think Tegra is another name that Tegra you got to. Yep, that's another name you gotta um, keep an eye on. Which did lose his um, red stripe this past week here, so Black definitely a name to keep. Definitely a name to keep out for, and also uh, Zen um, M- Lilla, Mikalski. Yeah, is another one that to keep an eye out for. Um, I see this battle much in the same way that I kind of see the quarterback battle, where I think both of these guys are incredibly talented, and I think you'd be happy no matter who wins i think i think this is a situation in which you have two good options um that being said uh Mikowski is older much like kyle mccord's older he has uh a bit more time in the program terry chibola uh being a freshman um Terry Chibola yeah, I, has, I, has a, has a future at Ohio state. He is a future starter at Ohio state. I just don't mm-hmm. think he's a current starter at Ohio state. Um, but yeah, would, the fact that I he's a freshman and pushing for that job is a huge, huge indicator of where he is or where he at least. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's a huge indicator. I mean, they've barely started spring practice and he's already lost his black stripe. Yeah. I'd give the edge to, to uh to zen right now just he's got that extra year there and from re- reports here saying he's he has he seems to have that slight edge just because of that extra year that he has here austin says coaches have been raving about zen i tell you what and i don't think we're gonna we're not gonna talk much about the ryan day press conference but he spoke very positively in general about the offensive line, which is huge. I think the offensive line is the number one concern heading into the season, a season in which I do believe Ohio State can easily challenge for a national title. They're going to be right back in the national title hunt. The biggest thing standing in the way, the biggest concern in the spring camp, in my opinion, was replacing uh, your center and your two offensive tackles. That's a huge, mm-hmm. that's a huge undertaking. Is Ryan day choosing to start McCord? Hey, we, 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 we'll get there, man. We'll get there. We're not talking about McCord yet. Um, offensive line sticking to the offensive line. Um, we talked about replacing two offensive tackles. You're also replacing your center in Luke Whipler. Kyle, who are we looking at? to replace Luke Whipler. Well, that, that's, that's a big one too, because we, I, I think of the three of those three positions, I thought the center was going to be the most challenging there, but you, you got the, you got the ULM transfer Victor Cutler yeah. or cart or um, 
or Carson Hinsman as well. I think those are probably the two names to keep an eye out for for the center position. Uh, Austin says Hins basically has the job on all accounts. Not so much. Uh, they brought in, yeah. and, I, and for the record, Austin, I still 100% believe, not 100%, 93.5%. I'll go 93.5%. 93.5% believe uh, Hinsman's getting the job. Um, but they brought in a transfer from uh, Louisiana Monroe, Victor Cutler, to challenge for the job, and he's looked good. Hinsman has more time in the program. I do think Hinsman wins the job, but Ohio State made sure that they had depth and they had someone to challenge for the job. And uh, Victor Cutler's doing exactly that. All right, Kyle, that's our offensive line, which again, Ryan Day says he feels pretty good about. Now, rule one, the doctor lies. Of course, rule one, the doctor lies. But I feel like I feel like maybe he doesn't say that because he's been saying the offensive line was a concern. Now it's a little bit less of a concern. Like I don't feel like he pulls his foot off the gas unless he, he believes it. So, but where do you want to go next? I'll, I'll, I'll let you pick. Well, let, let's 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 talk about let's talk about what Austin wants wants to talk about, and that's the quarterback. Wide receiver. We didn't lose any. I mean, like obviously JSN is going to the NFL, but we lost JSN in week one. Um, your wide receivers will be your wide receivers. Ohio State didn't lose a starting wide receiver. Um, at least not yet. Could the post spring transfer portal bring names to that list? Yeah, it sure can. Um, but we're not, we're not there yet. All right. Um, but, but Kyle said uh, quarterback, Kyle, is that where we're going? CJ Stroud out yes. in Kyle McCord or Devin Brown. I kind of already gave my tip as to where I think we're going there. I think we are going Kyle McCord again. He's got two, he's got two years in the system. And I think Devin Brown, much like I think Tegra Chibola has a future at Ohio state. 100% has a, you know, can, if he, if he sticks around, he can start at Ohio state. If he sticks around, he will start at Ohio state. I think he's excellent. I think he's pushing McCord which is exactly what you want. Of course, um, he's pushing McCord. Um, they're splitting. They're still splitting reps at one. It is an open quarterback battle. Mm -hmm. I am going to give the edge to McCord at this point though. Yeah, it's both quarterbacks have from, from what the reports are showing or um, telling us here, it, both quarterbacks definitely struggling early on here, but do give do give the edge to McCord or, um, early on here. Is struggling the right word? Neither quarterback is currently C.J. Stroud. I, I think is what that means. There you go. And there by the go. way, C.J. Stroud <laughs> wasn't C.J. Stroud in September of 2021. It's true. That is true. We 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 do this every time we switch over a quarterback. Everyone wanted CJ to be Justin Fields in week one, and he wasn't, and they were ready to throw Kyle McCord in there. Guess what? They're not gonna look like a first overall draft pick in week one. Or a or a a different quarterback who is no longer with the team. Talk about that. <laughs> talk about that kyle nope we're moving on though we are moving on uh michigan bucknut uh, says i think some of the young guys will take snaps away at wide receiver yeah i mean i down down in my camp notes of just other other storylines to watch i say uh where, where is it um could Jaden ballard challenge fleming for starter yeah I think he can, but that's not, but we're still not even talking about the freshmen. The freshmen have shown up in this camp looking amazing. And we're still not even talking about most of the second year guys like Grays, who's shown up to this camp looking amazing. Uh, there, there's too many wide receivers on the team, which, you know, I said, 
Ohio State, uh, you know, other than JSN, obviously, but they didn't really have JSN last year. Ohio State didn't lose any receivers off of this team. They're going to. You're, you're going to see some wide receivers leave in, at, at, you know, post spring. I, there's too many guys in the room. Some, some, yep. someone's going to figure out they're further down on the depth chart than they want to be by the end of spring. And, and they'll hit the portal and good on them. Go, go but, find yourself some playing time. But we will not name names though. Honestly, I don't know who it is because I, they know, they know, they will know by the end of spring where they are in the depth chart and they will react accordingly. Mm-hmm. All right, let's let's look at some uh, other uh, key departures here, Jared. So just going to go down the list that you have here. Uh, Tanner McAllister, Hase is just, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of safeties in this room. There's a lot of safeties. Uh, there are. Who, who's probably the best option currently to replace Tanner McAllister? So Tanner McAllister, you have to keep in mind, is... The safety, but he's also a corner nickel. It's that it's that cover safety spot, which is also kind of like a third cornerback spot. It's somewhere in between those two things. So you, this is not a, a a place, for example, where you're going to see like Josh Proctor come in. Josh Proctor, that, that you know, he's a deep safety. That that's where his skill set yeah. takes him, right? You're not going to see Josh Proctor come up and play the the nickel cover safety, whatever the hell we're calling it. Right. Um, so you're going to need a cornerback type player playing safety. And to me, I, I think that points right directly at Cam Martinez. He he was yeah. the backup for Tanner McAllister in this role yep. last year. I, I think other than Josh Fryer. I think this is the easiest call on the list. I think it'll be Cam Martinez. Okay. Zach Harrison. Ohio State has options here, which is always nice. So first and foremost, Ohio State already has their two defensive ends, right? Yeah. So we're talking about like a third slash fourth rotational defensive end. Mm Mm-hmm. Zach Harrison, of course, started, but he also split a lot of time with with JT and with Sawyer and JT and Sawyer are going to get the majority of the snaps this year, but not all of them. Um, So, you know, who's going to be that third? Who's going to be that fourth defensive end in the rotation? Gun to my head, I'd say Kenyatta Jackson, three, Amari Abor, four. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. I think I think those are probably the two big names to to get the snaps beyond yeah, JT and uh um and Sawyer. But make no mistake, it will be JT and Sawyer most of the time. Um those are two yep. very well conditioned individuals. Um they will be on the field a lot. Okay. Uh Cam Brown. Yeah. Cam Brown. Cam Brown, um, we're basically talking about the the second corner here. This is you know what we're talking about. Um, Denzel Burke is still your CB one. I think he'll be come back. You know, another thing I have down in the camp notes: the return of Denzel Burke. I, I think he had a rough start last it's- year. He recovered. He played way better than people give him credit for down the stretch of last year. Denzel Burke is still your CB one. Make no mistake about that. CB2, um, two very interesting names in place here to replace Cam Brown. One, Jordan Hancock, who got a lot of those reps last year. Um, Jordan Hancock is a very good player, can be a little feast or famine, much like the entire defense was last year. He's either sort of playing lights out or he's giving something up. Uh, but Ohio State also brings in um, from Ole Miss. Oh, I say it brings in from old mess. David Igbin Osun. Igbin Osun. Igbin Osun? Kyle, how did you do on that? Igbin Osun. It's Davison, by the way. Davison Igbin Osun. I was real focused on the last name, Kyle. <laughs> Davison yeah, Igbin he, he Yeah, he was, he was in uh, freshman All American. Um over at Ole Miss last year. I think he started seven games, seven, eight games at Ole Miss there. So definitely a big, uh, big welcome 
to have another corner here because if you look at the corner room here the cornerback room jared this is that's young this is this is such a young young corner so there's not really anybody out there there's no juniors there's no seniors on this it's well two two years Burke, one year Burke is a junior yeah yeah you're, you're right you're right yes <laughs> it, it's 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 yeah, it's just it's weird because I'm I still it's really weird to me that the uh, 2021 class um, are already juniors. Makes me yes, feel old. You're right. Yeah, but still, it's 20 class beyond 2020 be, class beyond Burke, beyond Burke and Hancock. Yeah, it's it's a it's a young young group here. So yeah. bringing in bringing uh davison in but yes he's young too but he has a lot of experience already yes. so having him bringing him in is is a big big welcome yeah absolutely but yeah as, as kyle points out the cornerback room is very very young um let's see but the safety position uh we have ronnie hickman out um so we we, we kind of know we kind of think, well, we think we know Cam Martinez is probably going to be that cover safety, right? All right. So now we have a strong safety and a free safety. Your, your, your back safety and your up safety, right? Ronnie Hickman was playing a lot of that back safety last year. Who played that position before him was Josh Proctor, but then Josh Proctor got hurt and then Hickman took over the job. So Proctor didn't see a ton of time last year. I think you take Hickman out. I think you put Proctor in. Uh, Proctor played this spot two years ago. Um, that being said, keep an eye on Kai Stokes, another young defensive back. Um, he'll be I, he'll be. Josh Proctor, if Josh Proctor stays healthy, I believe remains the starter here. But how many snaps can Kai Stoke earn on the field? How much can he get on the field? I, I think how many snaps can he take away from Josh Proctor, I think will be the the interesting tell here. Yeah. But then how where would Sony Styles fit in? Because we, we saw him from time that's to all, time. That's also down in my more notes, Kyle. <laughs> um <laughs> That's also down in the in the in the more notes. Um, so b before we before we even go there, you know, let's talk about. We have a third safety spot to talk about that will continue to be. Um, oh, God, there goes my brain. Help me out here, Kyle. Uh, Our, Johnson. Who, who are you talking about? Um help <laughs> um the not ronnie hickman um zach says such ransom? Tiles. yes ransom god i could not <laughs> think of ransom's name um i think i think ransom's your up safety so i just you know we mm -hmm. talked about sort of how the safeties are playing out i think that's that's interesting um, Zach says Sunny Styles would be starting. Uh, you brought up Sunny Styles. Let's not forget Jahan, uh, uh, Jahand Carter. Jahan, Jahan, Jahad, Jahad. I keep wanting to throw an, an, an N in there. There you go. Jahad, Jahad. Carter. Um, these are two incredibly, yeah, ransom back. Um, these are two incredibly talented players. Um, Jahad Carter was one of the best players in the transfer portal coming in from Syracuse. Sonny Styles looked like a grown ass man as an early enrollee, as a as a not not even early enrollee, early enrollee. A lot of these guys are early enrollees. He reclassified. He reclassified. So, um, where do these two individuals fit in? I, I you you brought in Carter for a reason. You you can't not let Styles on the field. And a lot of people are like, well, well, Styles is kind of a linebacker too. What if he's playing linebacker? Man, there's a there's a glut of guys at linebacker too. 
Most 20 year old, uh, 22 year olds look like chumps. Yeah. Um, it's a good problem to have, Jared. It is a good problem to have and, until people got, until guys start transferring. Yeah. Let's see. Who, who, who are we forgetting here, Kyle? Um, out is Teron Vincent. Mm-hmm. Um, defensive tackle for but Ohio I, State. I, I feel I feel that's Ty Leak all over. Ty in my, Leak my, my and that's, Yep. You're. Ty, Ty Leak gave a really good interview this week where he admitted that he had been lazy at times and not putting in the effort at times. Um, sometimes there, there, there's like a, you see a guys take a leap physically from freshman to sophomore, but I find that you see guys take a leap mentally, especially from a mat- maturity standpoint. Mm-hmm. from sophomore to junior. And I think, I think that's what we just saw in Ty Leak, And I think that's what he needed maybe more than anything else. Um, that's, that's, that's where you see, you know, you see them put, put things together athletically as sophomores, but then it's like, you know, you get that grind set, get that buy-in all that stuff that, that you need to take care of yourself mentally in order to take that next leap. I think that's where we see Ty Leak Williams at right now. Mm-hmm. Where does, uh, where does you go? Ahead, Kyle. Where does Caden Curry come into the pick? Uh, not much this year. I I would think. I, I, I think, don't know. How, but, but again, like Sonny styles, how do you keep him off the field? Yeah. He flashed last year. He absolutely did. So, no, yeah, he believe he belongs in that same conversation. I, I, I think is Caden Curry not at spring practice right now. I've not seen his name come up in the notes much. Maybe, maybe he's one of the guys who's currently not practicing. Yeah, uh, where does Caden Curry fit in? This is an excellent question. He'll he'll see time, but where and how? I, I think are the questions right. Um, Again, he belongs in that same conversation as Sonny Styles. It's just like, I feel like I know who the starters are, but how do you keep this guy off the field? It's kind of, you know, you, there's a dozen wide receivers who you want to have that same conversation. I think Sonny steals time from Proctor. I would assume Ransom. I think it's Kai Stokes that will steal time from Proctor. Curry will play a good amount of snaps. Yeah, I wonder if if you see Jack Sawyer sort of maybe at times take his hand off the ground and and sort of play a linebacker, Jack, whatever position, then the, that might be a package where you see uh, Caden Curry come in in relief of him. Uh, is, is certainly a possibility, um, but they will get the guys on the field. I'm just not sure how at this point. Yeah, uh, Curry, Curry is Curry is uh, um is at spring practice here. Yeah, they said he is and, a full time yeah. DE this year, and I believe them. I just according according to Caliver, he 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 stated here that Curry is a lock behind Sawyer. There you go. But, but both Jackson and Abor, Abor were given um, reps behind the twos behind uh, Tui Malau. There you go. So, I mean, I, I guess, you know, if you're locking them down to sides, but now, now you, so now you shift the conversation to how you keep Amari Abor off the field. <laughs> yeah. Because he and yeah. Kenyatta Jackson are having good camps too. Yep. Good good problems to have. Mm-hmm. Curry will beat out Sawyer by no, absolutely not. Sawyer's no. a freak. No. There it's defensive end. They'll rotate him. Defensive end. Rushman package will be back. Here's the thing though. Hi, uh, Hall and Ty Leak are pretty decent pass rushers from the DT position. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> Probably more Ty, right, probably more Ty Leak than Hall, but still. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see here. 
let's look at some other names here. So, so we talked about filling in all the positions for the players who left last year. Let's talk about some other players that uh, um, that's making a name for them this spring here, or that we've seen last year. And you have in here uh, Gabe Powers. Yeah, Gabe Powers, the um, future cover linebacker, possibly. Yeah, um, Gabe Powers is having a real. Uh, but uh, I think Eichenberg, and potentially also, I, I forget. But but I know there's some guys not participating in spring from the linebacker position at the moment. So that's giving us an opportunity to see Gabe Powers, to see C.J. Hickman. Um, Again, DJ Hicks, by the way, to, to see these guys come on the, the field and during the spring, and then all of a sudden, like relegate them to backups is going to be difficult. Uh, that being said, there's something to be said. You know, I, I think Kyle, we get into the, the, here we are once again, talking about like the new shiny freshman, right? We talk about, oh, man, imagine Gabe, imagine Hicks, imagine Kai Stokes on the field. But like Chambers, Eichenberg, Proctor, Sawyer, JT, you have like a. And like neither Sawyer or JT are all that old, but they are third year at this point. You know, you add Ransom into that conversation and, you know. You had Burke into that conversation because he's third year, just like Sawyer and JT, but they have a lot, a lot of snaps, despite them being third year players, a ton of snaps. There's a lot. I, I do not remember a time where you had this many guys who were both insanely talented and insanely experienced on the Ohio State defense. The leap, the absolute leap. Add, and then by the way, add it, not you plug some you plug some holes in the safe in the safety. You bring in the hand the Hond Carter. You, you bring in uh Igan Bon. Mm, nope. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try again. Try it again. Igben Osen. You bring in Igben Osen, you bring in uh the had Carter, you, you you plug some gaps, some some you know, some depth issues at the defensive back position. You have this insane amount of experience in your front seven. More experience than Ohio State is used to having in their front seven. Yeah, we, we, we always had an we, insane leap forward this year. Not to mention just, yeah, second, always, just second year, just your second year in this scheme. Second year in a new scheme is huge. Yeah, we always had, we always talked about how great uh, how great the the defensive line was going to be um in year in years past here about how this is going to be the best defensive line this is going to be the de best defensive line now maybe this could be the best front seven now because the linebackers are finally finally coming up here and um finally we're finally starting to see those linebackers uh, make a name for themselves, which has always seemed to be the weak point for this defense for, for a few years. Not, not that it matters, unfortunately, because you can only play two or three at the same time. But like, yeah. I don't remember last time Ohio State had this sort of depth at linebacker. It's been a long time. When was the last time you were excited to play a linebacker on the bench? <laughs> It's been a long time. It's been a long time. The, like, we're just like. Eichenberg decided to come back and we were just like, uh, oh, no, that's good. No, 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 that's good. But like. Kind of wanted to see Hicks play, but no, it's good. Like we want Eichenberg back. We want Eichenberg back. Don't get me <laughs> wrong, but it's like. Kind of wanted to see CJ Hicks play. <laughs> no, I. I I again, I don't remember the last time. I really do not remember the last time that Ohio State was this deep at linebacker. And they've certainly had deeper defensive line groups than this defensive line group. 
Um, mm-hmm. Especially at the defensive tackle. I think Ohio state has some really good starters. I think, but we've seen, we've seen the defensive tackle group be like, you know, rolling six guys, seven guys deep yeah. a, a couple years yep. ago. And I think right now you're looking like hopefully four. <laughs> so that that's, so that's definitely a problem when, when you're looking at the defensive tackles, uh, we were talking about the defensive ends. I think they have five guys at defensive they're, end. They're, um, they're fine. Yeah. They're, they're, they're more than fine at defensive end. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're speaking of, all, you're, you're saying all those names here, the leadership on this defense, yeah. veteran leadership here is just, it's a great thing to have. And, and that's one thing that the past couple of, um, well, the last two Ohio State um, championships were because they've had veteran leaderships on those defensive side here. And you, and you got it here with, with, um, with Chambers, with, um, with Eichenberg and Proctor and Ransom and Simon and all of them too. It's just saying. Yeah. Just saying. They, let's just hope that the, let's just hope that Ryan Day's confidence in the offensive line is real. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's hope that's the case. Um, and I, I, I just have confidence that one of those two quarterbacks has to be really good and you're, and you're going to have to, you're gonna have to play Notre Dame early, which is going to suck. Um, they're going to be a lot, the first game. They're going to be a lot better this year than they were last year. And you're starting a bunch of new guys on the offensive line and a yeah. quarterback. So but, you're going mean, the good, to have the good to figure it out Jer- quick. Yeah, I mean, the good thing is you got three games to kind of see what's working, what's not. I mean, you you open up you open up against Indiana, and then you then you get two easy games. Well, all three should be easy games here, but you have a Big Ten game, and then you have two easier ones before you head head over to um, to Notre Dame, though. So they're not going to be thrown right into the wolves right away, so to speak, but. It's still early. It's still early and you got to go on the road there. Yeah. Um, no, but you, you, it's a good point. Like it's, you get three games. It's huge. It's huge. Yep. But All right. Speaking um, of the quarterbacks, Kyle, one of the things we keep hearing why people like Devin Brown, by the way, I don't know why anyone is confident about a starting quarterback at this point. You don't know. I don't know why people are picking sides. You don't know. You've not seen either of them play. You shouldn't be dead set cheering for either quarterback at this point. Just tossing that out there. Like, I I don't know why anyone is like, unless you're like Kyle McCord's dad. (laughs) Why, why, why are you pulling for one guy over the other guy? There's a competition that's healthy. That's good. We want that. We want a good, healthy quarterback competition. We want the best guy to win. And we want our coaches yep. to pick the best guy. That yep. That's what we want. And that's all I want. But there's been a lot of talk like, oh, well, OK. People are like, oh, I like Devin Brown more. OK, why do you like Devin Brown? More? He's more mobile. Um, talks out of camp right now are saying that Kyle McCord's plenty damn mobile. He's not maybe. You know breaking off big runs, but he's making throws on the run. He's moving around in the pocket. He's scrambling outside when he needs to. Much like we saw with CJ Stroud. And of course, CJ Stroud, better athlete, is better runner. We don't, that's not a, that's not up for debate. But much like we saw with, with CJ Stroud, it was more about buying time and letting his wide receivers be creative and get open and, early reports out of camp saying that uh, Kyle McCord is perfectly capable of that. Mm-hmm. All right, any, Kyle. Um, any other, any other names here? Oh, we could keep going. We can keep going, but uh, I think, I think we're good. I think that's about it. Uh, early, early reports out of spring have me feeling better. I'm not worried about any negative reports about the quarterbacks. 
biggest sin either of them are committing right now or simply, like I said, they're not CJ Stroud yet. Mm -hmm. It would be kind of ridiculous if they were, if we're being honest. Um, Wide receivers are insane, but we know that already. Like the young guys have shown up and the young guys are insane already. But we knew that. Like we, we, we knew that. How do you keep them off the field? I don't know. How do you keep last year's freshmen off the field or the previous year's freshmen off the field? Like other than like, they're all insanely good. How do you, how do you keep any of them off the field? I don't know. I get that. That's why the coaches are in that position to figure that out. (laughs) So, yeah, um, Running backs all look good. No surprises there. Ballard, Ballard is making plays. I, I did tease this earlier. I think Jaden Ballard could challenge Fleming for a starting spot. I don't think it's true. Yeah, true deep threat. But some of the stuff I'm I'm hearing out of camp right now is that maybe he was a bit like he was just like kind of a deep threat guy. But he has, you know, been adding more of the route tree to his skill set. And he's, you know, not just gonna be a deep threat guy and i think that's huge yep all right let's talk about some that, black that, that being that being said though michigan bucknut he's he's fucking fast <laughs> and he is a deep threat let's talk about some black stripes now jared let's talk about some black stripes all right we got we got four names here oh i think a couple of them we already mentioned here but uh tegra uh Chibola was one yep. of the first to have his uh, black stripe removed. Another is uh, George Fitzpatrick, both offensive linemen. And uh, the Ole Miss transfer, Davison uh, Igben, Igben Osen, uh, also lost his uh, black stripe. But true freshman. Yep. That's right. Tate. That's right. Uh Tate also lost his uh, black stripe in uh, Tony, the go to Gerdeman had a great um, uh, response to that. And he said only a handful of Ohio state true freshmen have had their black stripes removed in spring. Only a handful, none as early as Tate. Here are some other notables. So Tate got his removed in March 25th. Nope. Um, again, no, black they didn't have black stripes again. To, well, yeah, black stripe yeah. tradition only goes back to 2012. Mm-hmm. So, uh, JSN. 2012. Austin Mack, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Garrett Wilson. But Tate has been the, has been the earliest of those five. So, what I'm hearing you say right now, Kyle... Mm-hmm. Um, is that Carnell Tate is currently better than Garrett Wilson, Marvin Harrison Jr., JSN, and Austin Mack. That's what Tony's telling us. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, that's what Tony said. <laughs> See a Bucknut. That that yeah, that's yeah what no, Tony's that, that, telling us. That is what Tony Gerdeman has told us verbatim. <laughs> Ver fucking batum. All right, and those are that. those are the current black stripes for this year. All wide receivers. Does that say something about the position or the talent that Ohio State's bringing in a wide receiver? Because they brought in a lot of talent, a lot of other spots, too. Yeah. All right. Anything else before we wrap it up, Jared? No, um, I think I think we're good. I'd like to encourage everyone to um, head, on, head on. You know what? No, forget all that. Go to our YouTube page and you can be are you whatever, wherever you're watching this, you can be because we're on the Buckeye huddle YouTube page and we're on our own YouTube page. We upload to both. So wherever you're wherever you're watching this and if you're just listening to the audio version of this, head on over to one of those two YouTube channels. One, leave us a like Two, let us know who you think will who you think the most impactful freshman will be this year in the comment section. That's it. Like, like the video if you want to or don't. I don't care. What, what I really want you to do, 
in the in the comments of the YouTube video, let us know who you think the most impactful freshman will be this year. Carnell Tate's already gotten his stripe removed, but the wide receiver room super deep. How much how much impact can he really make in the wide receiver room? I don't know. But that's maybe you maybe you think it's still him. And if you still if you still think it's him, you let us know if you think it'll be someone else. Let us know that, too. And that's it. Uh, We have T-shirts. I'm wearing one right now. You can go to the sloopcast.com and find a bunch of links if you want to. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's Corner? Uh, A lot happened. A lot happened in Columbus this weekend, Jared. So I'm going to I'm going to read these real quick here. All right. Super quick. A lot, lot happened here. Uh, College basketball here uh, sends a ball, puts his name into the NBA draft. Wish him the best. I was hoping that we would see him back next year, but yeah, wish him the best there. Uh, on the other side, the women's basketball defeating UConn. About that, Jared. Defeating UConn to make it to the uh, to the Elite Eight, I believe. Yes, 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 yes. Um, let's see here. Moving on here, the. Synchronized Buckeye swimming. Buckeye Esquire Jared. says he feels like Senzenball will come back. We'll see. Yeah, I mean he, he he can. He's putting his name in the draft there, and he can he can return because he hasn't he hasn't um gotten a um he's still eligible to return agent. Is, 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 yeah, he hasn't he hasn't gotten an agent yet, so well, he's, no, he you, is you eligible. Can, you can get agents now. That's an nil thing. Hmm. That's right. That's right. I, I, I don't yeah, uh, don't maybe. don't quote me on any of the rules. I because I, things have changed since NIL. But I think <laughs> you can have an agent as a college player now. OK, well, maybe maybe we'll see him back in the Scarlet and Gray here. Uh, synchronized swimming back to back national title national titles again. Uh, the 34th national title and six of the last eight years. I haven't looked this up in a minute. Haven't they won the national title like 75% of the time? Something like that. Yeah, I think we talked about this last year. Yeah. Oh, we've talked about (laughs) it several times. It's insane. Ohio State is a synchronized swimming university, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. For for every year they've they're I I don't I I, maybe the NCAA I for for as many years as they've been eligible for an NCAA title. For as long as they've been doing it, whoever, I don't know if the they is Ohio State or if the they is the NCAA in that sentence. I honestly don't know. But as long as they've been doing it, they've won the national title something like 75% of the time. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And your Columbus crew. Taking down Atlanta six to one, six to one this weekend here. Got to burn hopefully, down Atlanta any bodes, chance you get. Yep. Hopefully, hopefully that bodes well for the season to come here. Couldn't score goals but for we'll shit see. last year. So, <laughs> well, they, they started off on not scoring that many goals in their first three games here, but all for a six banger here. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Definitely, definitely enjoy, definitely enjoy this victory here. All right, Kyle. Uh, anything else in Kyle's corner? I think that's it. That's it. That is it. Yes. All right. So uh, tonight's ending music is brought to you by a Columbus based band called Fields and Plains. Fields and Plains. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, this is Fields and Plains.